Now, it seems that uh, the Prime Minister is intent on many uh, conferences to actually break Perda and uh, say, uh, you, you know, that you haven't done a sterling job trying to buy votes for his candidate. He's breaking impartiality rules. Should he be taken off air? <laughs> well, uh, Boris Johnson has a habit of saying foolish things. You'll have to uh, forgive uh, our Prime Minister, not only for the way he looks, but for a lot of the things, uh, a lot of the times, the things he says. So we're quite clear. The election on May the 6th for the Mayor of London is an important one because uh, our global city has been struggling, like many other global cities, because of this uh, pandemic. There have been more than 300,000 Londoners who've lost their jobs, and there are currently just over a million Londoners who are furloughed. So I've launched my manifesto today, and it's a manifesto committed not just to protect the jobs we have, not just to support job creation, but to help those who've lost their jobs get back into work. And the way to do that is by having a green recovery. And what I've uh, published today in my manifesto is a green uh, new deal. And we can put aside the petty political knockabout stuff from Boris Johnson. And I'm keen to focus instead on a green new deal recovery for our city. OK, you're speaking to a very quiet city of London. Are you expecting bankers and Londoners to return back to work? And how quickly could that happen? Yeah, very good question, Francine. I'm here in Bloomberg, actually, in the heart of our city. And there aren't many people about when I came to Bloomberg, I cycled uh, in. Uh, Bloomberg itself has taken huge, uh, taken huge strides to make sure they uh, make their building safe. It's a COVID-safe building. It's fantastic. You come here, you're tested. Uh, social distancing is taking place. And we're encouraging other employers to give uh, their workers that confidence to return to work. You'll be aware many global cities, their, their city centre ecosystem relies upon footfall, the, the coffees, the bars, the restaurants, the, the tailors, the dry cleaners. We've got to recognise, though, that understandably people are a bit nervous returning to the city, but also people have been as productive at home uh, because of the advances in technology. So we've got to make sure that the experience of returning to the city is a safe one. What I've done over the next few weeks is I'll be investing in making sure we have attractions in the heart of our city to encourage people to suck it and see, to see how it works. And then I'm hoping over the course of the next few weeks and months, people will start returning back to the city. In particular, we're keen to encourage not just tourists, uh, but Londoners and others, uh, including investors, to return back to the heart of our city. But it's important at all times we're uh, vigilant and never complacent because this virus is still with us. So it, what does that mean for, you know, vaccine passports? Should they come quicker so that um, tourists can return safely back to London? Or is the fall, the autumn, the quickest we could have them? Well, at the moment, we're rolling out vaccines as fast as we can. The criteria we're using mainly is one of age. The older you are, the sooner you receive the vaccine, or if you're clinically extremely vulnerable. The good news is everyone now above the age of 50 uh, should have received the vaccine. It's now being rolled out to those below the age of uh, 50. London's population is roughly speaking 9 million plus. Uh, 3.5 million Londoners have already received the vaccine, but it will take some time for everyone to receive the vaccine. So discussions about a vaccine passport are a bit premature, but it's important the work is done now to see whether it's workable. In the meantime, there are things that can be done. For example, regular testing is a good way to see if somebody's got the virus. We know, I'm afraid, and many people who have the virus show no symptoms. One out of three people show no symptoms. So regular testing is important. And the good news is uh, our schools have reopened and we've made sure each parent has sufficient tests to test their child twice a week. And the good news is we're not seeing a big increase in the virus now like we were last year when there wasn't regular testing. It, when you look at the city of London, should we continue to try and pursue equivalence or, you know, should we move on, Mayor, and actually accept that the EU access is no longer something that we'll get? I'm afraid the bad news is, as far as the financial services is concerned, there is a no-deal Brexit. There isn't a deal with the EU as far as the financial services industry is concerned. The Chancellor is working on a memorandum of understanding. I'm hoping he reaches a deal with the European Union. It's really important for financial services, uh, legal, accountancy, insurance, for us to re reach a deal with the EU. I'm clear, though, uh, that notwithstanding that the underlying strengths of our city still are there, uh, our unique ecosystem, life sciences, universities, uh, culture, tech, uh, our theatres, uh, and so I'm hoping that when somebody's considering where to work, London versus, I don't know, 
Frankfurt, Brussels, Paris, love those cities as I do, they'll choose London for other reasons, aside from whether we have a deal with the EU or not. But, uh, Mayor, how can London remain attractive financially if actually it's barred from the single market? And what are bankers telling you that they will move to? What other capitals in Europe will gain from this? Well, I speak regularly to chief executives, to bankers and others. The good news is no one's talking about leaving London. What there is happening is uh, clearly operations in cities that are within the European Union for reasons that we all understand. I think they recognise that the uh, London offers things that no other city by itself can offer. There are other great cities in the EU, EU that can offer one or two things attractive to a bank or those in the financial services. Uh, London has it all. The big challenge for us is to make sure that our government, the Chancellor, reaches some sort of deal with the EU. I'm optimistic there will be a deal reached because it's in nobody's interest uh, for us not to have access to the single market. But also, I think the EU recognises any jobs from London won't go to cities in the EU. They'll probably go to New York, Singapore and Hong Kong. That doesn't benefit the EU. Right. Um, Mayor, should cannabis be decriminalised? What I've uh, announced over the weekend is an independent commission looking into that very uh, issue. I'm well aware of the impact uh, drugs has on violent crime in our city. I'm also well aware of the health impact it has. I'm also well aware of how young Londoners are often criminalised because they're in possession of a small amount of cannabis. What I've announced is should I be re-elected on May the 6th, I'll set up an independent commission to look at what's happening across the globe uh, where they've uh, decriminalised uh, cannabis, but also see what lessons we can learn in our city. And that commission will, will make recommendations to me and I'll use that evidence-based approach to decide on policy rather than my gut instinct or knee-jerk reaction. And your gut instinct is? I'm concerned uh, about many young Londoners being criminalised. I'm concerned about the health impact on many people because of uh, cannabis, but also I'm concerned uh, about the impact of, 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 crime, of, of uh, drugs generally on uh, crime. I'm not in favour of uh, decriminalising Class A dr drugs, but I, I think it is worth exploring the issue of uh, cannabis and those sorts of drugs.